Hey folks, it's Ben. We're here with another exciting video. Of course, if you clicked on the card or the title, you already know what it's about. But just know, this thing was a complete bear to get here. I actually went and looked at the car a while ago, like last weekend, and it was 70 degrees outside, 20 sun centigrade, whatever. And, uh, cool, we'll go get it next weekend. Well, this is next weekend. We got the truck stuck actually, and ah, oh, it's snowed and it's cold. It's like 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which is negative something Celsius. I don't know. Anyway, it was worth it. You don't know why? Maybe it wasn't worth it, but it's a cool car anyway. I don't know. Bam! Hello, Quonset 2, Bonneville, Chevy Caprice wagon, and now 1990 Pontiac. Nope, not a Pontiac. 1990 Chevrolet Beretta GTZ. GTZ, America, Canada, whatever floats your boat. It was for sale in Delburn, Alberta. Gentleman had it there. It comes with bumpers. I think someone on Beretta.net said, oh, I think I saw that car. Needs engine work and comes with bumpers. Well, it does come with bumpers. It came with these, which is what I'm most excited about. <clears throat> 16 inch uh, aluminum wheels. That's a Fiero bolt pattern. So all goes to crap. Still got wheels, right? And they go on a Fiero. Don't think that's a factory sunroof, but we'll find out in the RPO codes. Got some sort of sticker there. Haven't even really looked at it. To be honest with you, I bought it more or less sight unseen. I had seen it from the outside and had uh, talk to the guy about Berettas a little bit and they're pretty cool and quad fours. Uh, this has a quad four by the way. Looks like we're gonna have to do a little junkyard picking for a little bit of this and that. We got some, uh, our lenses are a little broken, but they're red. Got that going for us. Uh, a little tight. Uh, it was hard to get the trailer with all that snow right where I wanted it to be. So nice deck lid, gray interior, pretty awesome. Let me move this bumper and let's see what we have. Bumper's out of the way. Grand Prix style W body. <laughs> My 1993, two, 1993 Grand Prix had same door handles. This is a 1990 model. It was sold as a 92, <laughs> but it wasn't sure apparently. So here we have it. We've got an interior, probably no battery. Unfortunately with the 92, I was like, oh, ABS and an airbag, but uh, in case of 90, we are not in that land. Uh, seat will move somehow at some point. Need some cleaning. Looks like they had a midget murder party in here. That's fine. It's all good. What have we got? Uh, wet floors. They're, they're not wet, but they're... Whew. We got 216,000 kilometers on the odometer odometer. And those gauges aren't to be believed because they've been here forever. But it does have the cluster. It is Canadian car because that is metric. Cruise control for sure. That's cool. Something. Cruise set. Oh, nice on the steering wheel. Um, we're missing the radio. So note to myself. We'll have to figure something out with that. Probably you're looking at the Yankar again. Here's a Chevy. This is heavy, man. What's that out of? That's got, a, it's like a Lumina, maybe? Some sort of Chevy? Don't know what that is. Guess in the nose. Open for a, uh, it does have keys and lots of them. Hey, is that a cool Canada spinner? It is. Uh, let's see, the, uh, the glove box is here. Looks like I need a key. Uh, that weird push button. There we go for the five speed thingy. This should go in there, maybe, other way. Could be the right key. I usually like to start these in the trunk, but while we're here, okay, so that did something. Locks it, is there a release? That something? Nope. So this somehow opens. Is it press and seal? No. Okay, don't know how to get that open yet. You would think it would be like easy. But apparently, not so much. Okay, so there's probably documentation in there. <laughs> well, uh, I'll figure that out in another video. We do have a little bit of cracking in the dash. So we've got some good YouTube videos and uh, coming up here looking at this. I don't know if that's factory or not. 
I'm not good enough to tell. They got map lights here. Uh, headliner failure there. This is weak. I thought the headliner was falling, but it looks like it's just this guy. So I was looking at it. Uh, here we have the five speed and power windows right there. Oh, here's a little, the park brake, which is where the Fiero guys wanted it to be, but they had to put it on the outside. Button to press. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa crap. What's that? Ugh, wheel lock key. Trunk release. Power trunk release. Cool. Lumbar support. Something. I'm not sure what that is either. Okay. Uh, car is air conditioned. Nice. There's a problem, uh, however, with this video. <laughs> and I can tell you right now, what's the. No. That's some rigmarole roll there. Let's see what's going on. But the hood release is not at this point. So, uh, not saying it's not released. I'm just saying it's frozen shut if it's not. So, anyway, that's just a screw. Never had a Beretta before or a Corsica. GTZ emblem, nice. Uh, so, I don't know what to say. But I have had lots of GM cars before. I've never a Quad 4. Carpets. Pass through, maybe? Oh, I think that seat might fold down. Anyway, so nothing back here to write home about. Let's, uh... Big door. <sighs> Pins. Always with the door pins. Let's try one of these magical GM keys. Is it this one? The car was, uh, we ended up paying 1200 bucks for it. And like I said, the quad four and the five speed would fit in a Fiero pretty handily. I'm not sure this is gonna open for us. Yeah, uh, quad four and the five speed would fit in a, a Fiero. And uh, the wheels also fit a Fiero. So I'm pretty cool with that. But honestly, my daughter, who's only 11 at this point, would love a, uh, it says no way. Maybe if we put some oil in there, <clears throat> we'll get some oil in that. Uh, once a five speed, we've had that Ford probe. You guys have seen that video series. This maroon five-speed four-cylinder turbo, that was loads of fun. And uh, she got to drive the parts car and learn how to ship that. But, uh, yep, we'll have to work on that a little bit too. Can't see under the power barn, can't even get in the trunk right now. Let me cut the video and I'll see what I can do about the trunk. Can a deep creep hide in there for the rescue? Look at this now, full insertion, full turn. Hi. So, what do we got here? Co rolled up carpet, carpet mats. You know, honestly, I hate carpet mats. I don't know, I don't like them. I don't put them in my cars. They're heavy, they slow you down. I don't ride. I'm the last guy to own these things. I don't often sell cars, so. Geez, there's a whole bunch of them in here. I'm guessing we were running Christmas lights. Why do we have such big cables? What's going on here? And an ox. Looks like we were running, we had some stereo tonnage in here. More carpet. That's stuck there. Hey, that's what I want, RPO stickers. The jack and stuff. Oh, that's why the head unit's gone. Somebody had something fancy in here. That's a shallow, uh, very shallow trunk area. Jack. Thing. Yep, okay, it's just not been reassembled. So we had some tunage back here, I guess. Speakers are there. Oops, something fell. What was that? Oh, that's my other phone. Oops. Let's stuff that back there. <laughs> my pocket, zip that up. So I'm gonna stop, take a picture of the RPO codes. Power trunk with these. So nothing, fan you know, nothing out of the weird here. No crazy parts. Obviously, you're running some sort of aftermarket awesome stereo, so I don't have that. Clean trunk. Not rusty at all. Not rusty at all. Down here, bam. Pretty clean. A little bit here, a little bit there. New shocks are coming anyway. Muffler's in pretty good shape. I don't think the stock ones were dual outlet. 
tanks there. Fuel filter is right there. Bam. I think it's in very good shape. Tires are toast. Nobody's home. Let me take a picture and let's go back to the nose, see what we can do. So one of the issues we're gonna be fighting with this car is the paint, the clear coat has died. Now, if you've seen the Fiera video, we can save it. We can bring it back, but it'll be expensive, but it'll be sharp. Like we've got good clear coat here, I guess. Maybe, tough to say, I think it fails here. So we have the dark paint underneath, so we might be able to get this to look respectable again. She's got a nice metallic sheen to it. She's something pretty. Uh, she's a Canadian import car, that's for sure, thanks to that sticker there. Tire pressures, um, it was built in November of uh, 89, so she is a early 90. And so she's on one of the... That's annoying, I gotta fix that. She's just not lining up right with the pin. Or closing right. The issue we have right now with this car is A, it's been parked for a billion years, and two, we just slung it through an hour's worth of slush and snow in the back of a trailer. I'll show you the picture here um, to get it where it is. And that's where I think what's wrong with our nose and not opening the hood uh, is that we've got something frozen, plus something like this is, there's gap here, but not here. So one of these days uh, for the next video probably, I'll stick a heater under here and we'll warm all this up and uh, for a long time and then we'll see if we can pop the hood because I, I really want to know what's under here, man. <laughs> Quad four, but look how big this hood is. It's really actually fairly long for in terms of a, a V6 hood in regards to a Grand Prix or something like that or even a Bonneville, it's a big hood. So uh, there's something hiding in here, but yeah, I just, I've tried to, to pop and massage and a little bit of a ding right there, but uh, and like she, she's, I don't think she's letting go. So we'll have to just, you know, baby it open. See what we can do. Do a little Googling too, right? See if we can pop that open. Cause right, yeah, on the handle side, it's just not, not our friend. It's kind of already pulled out here. Brakes, I don't remember them working well at all. <laughs> when you are rolling off the trailer, she kind of just, went it was kind of a chaotic bang something that just a coin holder what the heck is that like sticky or mud i'm not sure those are cool Ooh, headlights Ooh, clickers tilt wheel says yes honk it will drop a battery in this thing and see how the digitals do yeah this must be speaker related i'm I bet you, I don't know where it go. Oh, battery. That's where they're sending it to. It's going to the battery. And they didn't want to drill a hole in the firewall? That's fine. Thanks, guys. Thanks for preserving my car. That's annoying. So, all right. So, this is what I've got. Introduction to the 1990 Pontiac. Pontiac. Man. It's not like I own 14 Pontiacs, because I actually almost do. But Chevy Beretta GTZ. Not a Bonneville. GTZ, not dark tray metallic like a Caprice. I don't know what color it is. I have to look that up too. <clears throat> anyway, comments, questions, excited about the project. Another project? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's another one. The Caprice wagon has uh, been delayed till spring just cause it's stuck now by the Bonneville. And the Beretta, geez. And <clears throat> this is causing problems cause it's so cold. I keep working on the cold. Why do you live in Alberta, Ben? Jeez, I don't know, but it's cold out. So yeah, we got the Regal, 94 Regal fail, has a failed alternator, so we gotta rip that out of the Bonneville. Got the uh, everyday Grand Prix right over there. And the pickup truck, and the Fieros are hiding in the closet. What else do I own that's cool? Oh yeah, the 88 Fiero's still in Maine. So is the Turbo Buick. They'll be coming, I think the Buick's coming this year, so that'll be, that'll be a trip. We'll do a vice grip garage like, Revival because that car has been parked a while. So anyway questions or comments go ahead and leave them and subscribe to my channel turbo 231 for more exciting stuff And we'll see you next time